Hey everybody, it's Chuck Perone, Monday, November the 6th, 2023, and welcome to the show. Another week, another week of crazy, man. I swear to God, guys. You know, I start, I research this show. I'm always looking for something interesting to talk to on the show about with you guys, and it just seems to be getting stranger and stranger and stranger every day. You know, ordinarily finance is a pretty boring thing. There's the one event, you know, that's happening that everybody's talking about, uh, which in this time would most likely be this Sam Freed guy who just got convicted of fraud and billions and billions of dollars in losses. But in the times are in, everything's so crazy that almost got like shoved into the background. Nobody's even talking about it at all. And the Federal Reserve is the topic, I guess, right? But anyway, before I get rolling, let me take a second. Welcome, everybody. And, of course, thank you guys for your support. You guys watching the videos and comments and questions and all the stuff you do every day. It's awesome for us. It keeps us going here. We appreciate you guys. All right, so let's talk about these markets today. Um, no real data coming out today. But the market's kind of had a kind of a weird mixed day. We'll go through these numbers. You'll see a lot of uncertainty now. As I, I shouldn't say no. There remains a lot of uncertainty. Stock market hoping for the best. Bond market in a terrible bear market and getting worse, it seems like. Uh, you got the dollar, which is relatively strong, but not as high, not as, high as it once was. You got gold and silver kind of languishing a little bit. They were up peak numbers, and now they're coming back a little bit. Oil, you got wanting, I believe you, oil prices want to go down, but you keep getting news from the Middle East and this war and the Saudis and the Russians and everybody else, and then Bitcoin rolling along almost at $35,000. Uh, wild swings everywhere, everywhere. It's just crazy. It's, it's almost, if you're not Nostradamus, Okay, it's hard to figure this market out and put your money someplace where you would really feel secure, right? So let's look at these markets. So the stock market today has an update of uncertainty. The market wants to blast off. The market is waiting for the Fed, the first sign of rate cuts. This market's going to rocket like it's on its way to Jupiter, man. But today up small, the Dow gains 34 points sitting at 34,095. The NASDAQ up 40 points, sitting at 13,518. And the S&P up seven points, 4,365. So across the board, stocks up today, nothing spectacular, but even a small up day, better than a down day, right? The bond market, on the other hand, not a good day in bonds. So bonds selling off again. The 10-year jumps 10 basis points, was down going heading down toward four and a half now jumping up today 4.66 percent the two-year also jumps 10 basis points now sitting at 4.94 percent so bond market's just been all over the place up down and all around i think a little bit of uncertainty in the bond market this week you have 112 billion dollars in treasuries coming online this week that's a big number the market's going to have to try and digest. They said that the Treasury has like $900 billion of offerings they're going to put out between now and the end of the year. It's almost a trillion dollars. It's crazy times, guys. So this bond market trying to absorb all this extra supply that, of course, when there's imbalance on supply and demand, now, of course, you're going to have yields higher. The dollar today up very small, just fractional, 18 basis points, sitting at 105.25 on the index, still solid, but just not as strong as it was, and kind of trending down now, it looks like. We'll see if that continues. Uh, metals today, in spite of this dollar, not having a great day. Gold falling today, down $14.30, sitting at $1,977.90 for an ounce of gold. Silver down 20 cents, sitting at $23 even for an ounce of silver. So silver and gold, holding their price is holding up. I mean, you had gold at 2000 so it's down at, what, you know, 20-something, $22 or whatever. You had silver at $25, it's down to $23. Um, I really believe that the first opportunity metals have to blast off higher, they're going to. So those numbers are going to seem quaint 
in a short time, I believe. But uh, gold and silver being held back by a strong dollar and some uncertainty. And less government uh, sovereign buying as well. Oil today up very small, up 36 cents a barrel, $80.87, coming on the heels of Saudi and Russia committing to their cuts throughout the end, through this year into 2024. You would think they would get a little bit bigger bounce. Didn't. I think I'm telling you guys, oil does I don't think oil is comfortable at these prices right now, in spite of what the producers want. Um, they're talking with this El Nino, a very mild winter. So we'll see what that does. Uh, you had natural gas prices today collapsing pretty hard. Of course, they're not as affected by the prices are by the war or the potential for war over there in the Middle East. But oil hanging in there, still above $80. I really believe it's most comfortable between 70 and 75. I would not be surprised, barring any weird geopolitical stuff, to see it heading back down to that number soon. Bitcoin today. It's no, not a much of a day for Bitcoin, down $21, sitting at 34986 just under 35 k was there earlier. Bitcoin looks solid, man. I mean, you say what you will. I've, I don't know if it's like, you know, a magic act where they're levitating these prices, but uh, it's quite a rally, almost, you know, more than doubling in price uh, from a low of around 16000 to thirty, almost thirty five. So uh, for our Bitcoin holders, good for you guys, man. As we do every Monday, we're going to talk about data we're going to get this week and how it could affect us and our portfolios, these markets. Today, quiet day, no data really today. Tomorrow, we'll get some interesting stuff, though. We'll get trade deficit info. The trade deficit ex expected to be higher, coming in at $60.3 billion. That's just for the month, guys. And uh, we'll also tomorrow get consumer credit info. This is going to be an interesting one because last month, consumer credit actually cratered down $15.6 billion. So consumers actually paying credit down last month. This month, they're expecting it to be up $9 billion. So they give back and now they're spending back up. So we'll see where that comes in tomorrow. On Wednesday, we'll get the Mortgage Bankers Index. That's expected to be down for both refis and purchase business. We'll get wholesale inventories expected to come in flat from down 0.1% last month. On Thursday, we'll get jobless claims. That's going to be probably be the big news of the day. That consumer credit. The jobless claims are expected to come in at 221,000, up from 217 last week. Uh, you know, this is what the market is certainly hoping to see. Um, I really believe the neutral jobs number is around 280,000 claims per week. But uh, if they can get these jobless claims higher and higher, of course, that reduces the chance or the, the likelihood of another rate increase this year. We'll see, guys. You know, I still think these inflation numbers are too high. I want to see them coming down before I start to get on this bandwagon of no more rate cuts. I'm um, also on Thursday, we'll get Freddie Mac at rate stuff. Uh, Going to show mortgage rates on a 30-year mortgage at 7.8%. Uh, that's what Freddie's expecting. We'll see. You know, here in Vegas right now, about 7.99% for a 30-year fixed. Um, rent rates disgustingly high. Um, Friday, we'll get the University of Michigan Consumer Index. This is a very important one with a lot of pieces to it. It's expected to be down to 63 on the index from 63.8. Obviously, they're expecting consumers to be a little less happy this month than they were last month. It seems like they do that every month. Um, why would they be happy, right? I mean, this, this economy looks... Even though the numbers point to things being good, it just doesn't really feel good. You know, I'm in real estate, so of course, our economy is a lot different than the real world economy out there. But, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel good. Anyway, just a couple of quick things before we roll today. Um, as I mentioned when I was talking about oil prices, Saudi and Russia today announced their production cut of 1 million barrels per day would stay on until the end of the year. Um, oil, obviously, Saudi's trying to support higher oil prices. Uh, this cut, they're not even cutting anything. They already have cut it. So this is really a, 
Like maybe they were hoping the cut would end, they would add more supply to bring prices down. I don't think that would be a prudent move by the Saudis. So this extension is not a surprise for me with prices being a little bit soft. Uh, Saudi produces about 9 million barrels of oil per day. And amazingly, guys, the U.S. is now producing 13 million barrels per day. Now, the Saudis seem to have all the oil clout, but we're actually out producing them. Um, of course, they're trying, as I said, to support higher oil prices. But I'm telling you guys, I really feel like oil prices want to decline. I think the only reason they're staying above $80 is because of this war and the threat of maybe the war spreading. Um, you know, news on you know, and geopolitical crap holding it up. Um, I think that the, this announcement by the Saudis today is a gigantic nothing burger because there's nothing new really going to happen. Um, so why would prices move if production's going to, if they're not cutting more production? Oddity. Um, banks. I was reading another big article today. Banks now tightening, continuing, I should say, to tighten credit lending standards. <sighs> These guys. So when rates were zero and they couldn't make any money on their loans, they were lending to every friggin' Tom, Dick, and Harry who had a credit score. Now that rates are higher and they can make some money on these loans, of course, they don't want to do that. Really scrutinizing borrowers, both consumers and businesses, trying to obtain credit. Uh, banks being extremely, really cautious about lending. Um, more applications being turned in, a lot more applications being declined. So we'll see how that plays out too, because obviously we all know that credit is what makes this economy work. If people had to pay cash for everything they bought, the economy would be a minimum $1 trillion smaller just on credit card debt. So uh, we'll see how this lend tightening of lending standards continues. It's tough in real estate right now, but you know the bottom line is the lending standard is the rate. Because I don't care what your FICO is. Your FICO is a 600 or an 800, and you're hearing you know an 8% mortgage, and you're hearing a payments of you know approaching $3,000 per month. Well, it doesn't matter your FICO, does it? Residential real estate. Now, this is our area of expertise. Listen to this, guys. This is some amazing, amazing numbers. Residential real estate affordability just hit a 40-year low. 40-year low. The median mortgage payment now higher than $2,500. Now, listen to this, guys. To make housing affordable, by lender standards, i.e. it is only a small, certain percentage of your income. Okay, listen to this. Either rates would need to fall 4.4%. So from 8 to about 3.6%. People would need to earn about 62% more than they do now. So they have to take it from about, you know, 70,000 a year household income to about 120,000 a year household income. Or housing prices would have to fall by 38%. <laughs> okay, so you get that, guys? What's the likelihood of any of this happening? So either interest rates need to fall 4.4%. People need to earn 62% more money or house real estate prices need to fall by 38%. Which of those do you think is the most likely? That's a scary one there. And I was reading an article today, I was wondering how this was possible, but Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway now sitting on more than $150 billion in cash. This is way, 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 way more cash than he typically keeps on hand. He must be feeling like, you know, he doesn't telegraph what he's doing. My guess is either he's got something very big already on coming or he's keeping his powder dry for the, for the correction and he can get in there and swoop and get what he wants super cheap. Anyway, guys, that's it for the day. We appreciate your guys' support. I will be on today answering any questions and comments today. Um, 
We'll be back tomorrow. It'll start getting a little bit more interesting tomorrow with consumer credit info. Uh, we'll be back here to give you guys the news you need. Until then, guys, take care. Thanks.